and welcome to Georgian Crossroads. This is Burn Power in Tbilisi, Georgia, and I am going to be making a bit of an experiment today with uh, taking a mini vacation from Tbilisi. And I'm going to do it uh, Airbnb, $30 a night. That's not too expensive. And in fact, I got a bit of a discount on it. Three nights... And I'm going about, uh, I don't know, 20 kilometers, 15 miles or so to the little village of Kojori, which is up and up and up and up. And I'll explain more about the terrain as we go. But I'm traveling for the cost of one ticket on my Metro Pass or Bus Pass. And uh, that's 35 cents one way. <laughs> so we'll see what we can do. I've already got the apartment rented or the house rented for me. And, uh, and I'm thinking about walking back. Um, and I will keep you posted as that. At this moment, I'm not sure what's going to happen. It's kind of an overcast day, which is good for walking back, because I don't want to be out. And it looks like it'll be that way for a few days. I don't want to walk back in the middle of a hot, sweltering day, because I'll just get turned into a piece of toast. But I'm looking forward to just getting away and having a vacation. Come along with me. Let's see what happens. So first we have to get a bus. And to get a bus, you look at the signs. The little uh, signs in every bus stop, most every bus stop, there are a few that don't have them, but they will switch back and forth into Latin script every now and then. And so you need to keep your eyes open. And here I see the 380 going to Kojori. And that is the bus I want. And it's going to be between uh, 45 minutes and, depending on the traffic, uh, 50 minutes, 55 minutes to get up there from... Liberty Square or Baratashvili Street. I would recommend getting it at Baratashvili because there'll be fewer people there. So I left Vake and picked up the bus, got off at Baratashvili, and then looked for the 380 and took it out of town. And this is a pretty scenic part of the city, so it's worth looking outside, keeping your eyes on the buildings that you pass, a lot of old buildings as we, the bus goes through Sololaki. Liberty Square, Tavisu Plebis Moedani. And this is Sololaki, which has a lot of older buildings. I love walking through Sololaki. And by the way, if you haven't found it yet, I did do a video on just walking through Sololaki and looking at a lot of the old architecture there, uh, the kind of decayed Art Nouveau structures. Now we're getting ready to go up and up and up on the road to Kajori. And basically, this is all uphill from Tbilisi.
And if you keep a lookout on either side, because the bus will zigzag back and forth, you'll get great views of Tbilisi as you go. And uh, what is that abandoned piece of architecture there? Now on the way, there'll be one stop for Okrokana, which is uh, the little town that leads up to Matatsuminda Park. But essentially, these are the Lesser Caucasus. And the Lesser Caucasus are, uh, when you climb Matatsuminda Park, the, or hike up there, you think you're at the top. And then you look on and you see, oh no, it keeps going up and up and up. And that's what the Lesser Caucasus are like. They're not straight up and down like the Greater Caucasus. So as you travel, you're constantly kind of going up and down, then more up. And Kajori is one of the summits, but it keeps going eventually further up past Kajori as well. A little bit of roadside gas station, a Dunkin, formerly Dunkin Donuts. And we'll pass the cutoff for another town, Shindisi, on the way. But I've never actually been there, so I have absolutely nothing to say about it. All of this is going to be for one lorry. Uh, six months ago, it was for half a lorry, but prices have gone up. But that's still pretty cheap for us, uh, but that doubles the price. So, I've gone through Tabak Mela, and now I'm up at Kajori here. I'll put them out in meters here. And that's a little sign that says Kojori, and then, oh, I didn't have time to read that, but you didn't probably read it anyway, unless you were Georgian. But there's this one straight ahead path here that I take, and it just goes down this one street. I could have gone further up and gotten off in the center of town, but I would have missed all these kids playing around. Uh, but I'm glad I walked this way rather than go up to the other stop because it gave me a chance to pass this park where there were quite a few children playing and they were playing a little game of football. And then I walked down this road. No, it wasn't as wobbly as I make it. I was just walking and uh, experimenting with styles here, evidently failing. But this was the place I eventually arrived at. And I went downstairs, kind of mid-level in this house, and stayed there. So I arrived in Kajori mm, probably around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. But then I took a walk up to the center of town, which was actually a bit of a hike straight uphill, but I really enjoyed going up uh, the road, looking back past the painted trash cans <laughs> into the valley near the area. But this is what it looked like. Uh, there was this one house here I really liked. I liked the brickwork on it. And you'll notice you don't really see into the houses. For some reason, Georgians are open, but when you walk by their houses, they're all completely fenced in with usually stone fences, so you can't see what's going on in the house. Every now and then, though, you can. This was a theater that really caught my attention, and I kind of peeked into it, and this is the little archway that leads into it, but 
I'm going to save that for the third video in my series here, so come back to the theater. Meanwhile, there is a bus stop indeed in the center of Kajori. I could have gotten off there and walked down, but actually, I preferred what I did. I showed it to you on the map. And so this is the center of town. And this is just looking around. And... You know, there's the cars. There's only two stores, uh, places to buy food. Well, three. There's a, a woman that has a, uh, a little vegetable stand. And then there is uh, a spa and a Nikora, which are both chain stores that have food. The Nikora was the better store. And uh, this is the fountain at the center of town. It wasn't working. It will be working in our next video. So come back just to watch the fountain work. But I like that kind of weird green color. But right next to it, uh, in the same building as the Spar, this chain store, small convenience store, was this wonderful Soviet-era mural made out of stones. Uh, essentially, this is some sort of uh, tiled mural, but with pieces that are much bigger than your usual tile. I don't know the name of that style. But the Soviets were really into these murals. And this one shows a church, shows grapevines, shows flowers, looks like pomegranates, the sun, uh, the, there's a fortress in the town, which we're going to try to get to tomorrow, uh, and of course, Georgians dancing and celebrating, and wine, and uh, fascinating stuff. One of the things I've liked about traveling all over Georgia is finding these murals that have been left behind from the Soviet era. And I'm glad they're there. They are much better than the kind of dull postmodern accessories that you find these days. So these are uh, kids teenagers waiting to take a bus down to Tabacamela, the next town, which does have uh, stores and a restaurant and such. There are no restaurants here, unfortunately, in Kojori. But this also goes down to where they're probably going, Tbilisi. And just to let you know, this bus does come about every 20 minutes. There's either this bus or the 390, which goes all the way to Kiketi which I recommend also as an interesting place to visit. But when you're at the bus stop and you look around, you'll see, again, a lot of decayed ruins of buildings. My feeling was that Kajori used to be someplace that had much more of a center, and it has since disappeared. And this is looking across the street from the bus stop, and again, almost every building I'm looking at, it's either someone started to build something or it's an old building that started to decay. And it's a lot of unfinished things, which is odd, really odd, because Kajori is actually a great place to live. And people have spent good money on homes there. It's actually kind of expensive to buy a home in Kajori. Uh, by Georgian standards, not by American standards, but uh, certainly the Georgians would feel the price of it. And there's the bus. And up there is the fortress. Um, we'll look at that more closely at another point. But as you're walking, you also see relics from the past. These old uh, wooden buildings with Art Nouveau uh, ornamentation. Fascinating. Now, one thing that's really interesting is that this Art Nouveau period in Georgia was, came in at the end of the Russian Empire period. And when the Russian Empire collapsed, Georgia was independent for three years. And uh, they continued this modern trend, uh, what was modern then is now antique to us. But alas, uh, then the Red Army came in and the Soviets took over and Kajori was one of the last place 
where they had um, soldiers fighting the Red Army, and it was actually these young cadets called the Junkeri or Junkeri or Junkebi or something like that, Junkerabi or something like that. Don't quote me on that. But the main street is called, it looks like Junkeri Street, it's Junkeri Street. Well, is it Junkeri Street? Uh, something like that. And so this is another interesting building, fenced off. But just walking along the side of the street, you, you come across all these ruins. It's interesting. There's a lot of great homes surrounding the center of, the, of this town. They call these little towns Daba. Um, but there's almost nothing in the center. It's like, it's like empty. Very strange, because... An American would take this and re realize instantly, if this was an American town, that center is like gold. And, you know, you, you could have uh, more stores there because the people who live there are, you know, far away in many ways. It's, it's a good 15-minute uh, drive to the next small town, let alone Tbilisi. But this is looking over. There's the fortress way in the background. And, I, and uh, we'll talk about that in the next episode. But this is overlooking the... What do we call it? This, it's not quite suburban sprawl, but it's just a really lovely little town. Really needs a developed downtown. And this is the forest, which... Kajori is largely in forest. There are some grasslands, but mostly forests. And so I'm going to walk through the forest to get back to where I was staying. And these are largely pine trees and other deciduous trees. There's actually a an animated movie called Dreams of the Kajori Forest, but we'll talk about that when we spend more time in the forest. This is a monastery. It's got this lovely rock uh, surface. There's another chapel as well, and a place for the monks. The Look at these old tombstones. I don't know if they're tombstones. Some sort of, maybe stellas, uh, in the old Greek sense of the word. Look at these figures. It's just very mysterious. I don't know what they represent at all, except that they're probably soldiers. They've got blades. They're carrying some sort of uh, knife or something on them. But fascinating, really fascinating. So I did not go up the stairs to the top of this because I didn't feel I should. And actually, this trail had a fence going in and out to keep, I think, the cows out because there's a big problem in Georgia. There's a lot of cows, which we will meet soon, uh, just wandering around. And they can go anywhere that's not fenced off, which may explain all the fences that are around people's houses. But I don't think that's the only explanation. And this is probably the old rectory. But again, this building, it looked like it had been started and just completely left unfinished. And this is going just a little ways out from the monastery. And it kind of opened up to, into a dry field. This was someone graffitiing the monastery, which was really a shame, but I thought I would show it. Uh, because it's you know you need to see the whole thing, not just the pretty parts. And this was actually directly above the house I was staying in. And this is just a panoramic shot. We're eventually going to see the the fortress again.
There it is, up there. Let's try to get there. And then after taking a break for a couple hours, I went out again as the light was uh, changing and the sun was going down. And I saw an area at the beginning of the town where these switchbacks were coming in, where I'd gotten out, that looked like an interesting place to explore. And so I walked down the road that I walked in on, and this is that road, and I walked towards the Kajori Highway, although highway is stretching the term, but a lot of the highways that go through the mountains here are just two-lane roads much like Alaska. And you see a bus off in the corner picking people up off in the distance. Older man walking down the road. But I saw this, these electrical power plants and they kind of interested me, but not as much as the cows. So I decided to wait for the cows to pass. and the cow herders are coming up from behind. I am not sure what kind of cows the Georgians have here. They are not uh, massive beef or even uh, dairy cows they're just this they're kind of scrawny actually and yet a lot of uh, beef comes from these for Georgia and there are cows up in the high Caucasus on both sides of the Caucasus the greater and the lesser but eventually I'm gonna we're gonna share a word or two with the cow herders I want to call them, call them cowboys but they're not really cowboys they don't have a hat. They're not on a horse. And they're not boys. Though, they may call each other BG, which means boy. Gamajos. For video. Huh? Video. Uh, we do. What you found us with the Paluchi? YouTube. Yes, I figured out the Georgian word for YouTube was YouTube. And I told them I was doing this for YouTube. And so I walked a little bit further in this direction, down the hill a bit, not so far as I'd have to climb up the switchbacks, but just far enough to explore a little more, and that's looking off. Tbilisi is way out there. Nice lookout point. And this is looking back from the switchbacks going up the hill, and so this is right where the, the, right where that uh, is turning is where I got off originally to walk into the city. Sorry, town, Daba. And it's time to walk back. But as I was walking, I passed these guys pitchfork in the hay. Now those pipes are actually gas pipes and they're all over. I think this is a common feature all over the Soviet Union, these gas pipes, which always freaks me out because what if a car hits one of those? And here is another empty building. Looked like it had been an industrial garage of some sort, but now just abandoned. And you see this kind of thing often in Georgia. 
these are relics from the Soviet era, when, where I get the feeling there was a bit more prosperity, uh, or at least incentive, for development in the villages, which eventually declined. Here's some sort of electrical tower that we're going to pass through to get back home. I like those kinds of electrical towers with all the crisscrossing jagged shapes. And one more cow, just to say hello as I walk back down my street and I look and there's a couple kids kind of waving at me and that's it. So, we have arrived in Kajori, and we will continue with what turns out to be four episodes of my trip to Kajori, and I think you're going to find it very interesting. One episode will just be exploring an old, empty theater. Uh, the next one will be trying to get to a castle or, or a fortress, uh, but I'll explain that one, and, and more wandering around this very fascinating little town, Daba, as they called it. And uh, the last one will be the walk back, all the way back to my home near Vake Park in Tbilisi. So, come back again for the next part here on Georgian Crossroads. And remember, you should subscribe, press like, uh, and if you wish, you can contribute to the channel through the PayPal link below. Think about doing that. You might be the first to ever do so. From Tbilisi, this is Burns saying, Drobit. We'll meet again soon.